In today's video, I want to talk about one of my favorite pieces of third-party LEGO software, BrickX Command Center. This can be used with an RCX or Scout, Spybotics, Cybermaster, or NXT units. So when you first open it up, it's going to ask what you want to connect to. And again, there are many options. Here's where you will select what you want to open it for. Um, you can also select your firmware down here. So you, you can use BrickOS, Legos, pp 4 uh, there are many others. There's so many options. <laughs> but for right now, I'm just going to um, connect to a RCX on COM2 because that's what my IR tower is connected to. Um, so I'll, I'll start with going over some of the things you can do with the RCX or Scout. Um, and then a little later in the video, I'll hook up an NXT and we'll do some things there. Um, this software will be useful to you even if you don't want to program uh, using a text-based language. So, uh, yeah, let's look at... This is uh, the program I use for my RCX code pilot. Um, it may not even be the most efficient way to do this. This is just the way... I'm not very well versed in programming. It's not my first language. <laughs> uh, but I know enough to get by. And I do often go back to Dave Baum's uh, Definitive Guide to Lego Mindstorms book, which goes into pretty good detail about NQC, which is the, uh, this is the language I'm using here. Um, you can use the official Lego firmware and, and program in NQC. Uh, NQC stands for not quite C, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, and then for NXT, you'll use NXC, which is not exactly C. So I love the naming convention there. <laughs> um, but even if you don't want to program like this, even if you want to use the official LEGO software and their visual-based programming, you, this program will still be useful to you. Um, so while I'm talking here, I'll uh, go ahead and download the latest firmware, LEGO official firmware uh, to my RCX because it is uh, it doesn't currently have it. Select the firmware and it'll start downloading. And one thing to keep in mind, I'm using the serial tower to download the firmware and to communicate with the RCX because LEGO never released a 64-bit driver for the USB tower. So in my case, uh, my, the computer I'm using this is a small shuttle PC and it has two COM ports on board. But if you don't have a serial port, which most modern computers wouldn't, uh, you can use a USB to serial adapter. Um, I've had good luck with adapters that use the prolific uh, chipset. Um, you can try different ones. I've, m most of the ones I've tried have worked. Okay, so now we have our firmware installed on the RCX and we can look through some of the tools that we can use in BrickX Command Center. First, we'll look at the direct control, uh, which is something I've used uh, previously in a video um, you can directly control the motor outputs. You can um, designate what your sensors are, if they're going to be touch, uh, temperature, um, any of that kind of thing. And you can select how you want it to be read. If you want it to be read as raw, Boolean, percent, um, Celsius. I don't. I don't think these drop-down menus will show up in the in the um, in the screen capture. But there that there's a bunch of options here. Um, you can choose between Celsius and Fahrenheit if you're doing uh, temperature, all those kind of things. So it's, it's just a good diagnostic tool. You can have this running, you can build something, and you can see how your sensors are going to react um, in your build in real time. You can also start and stop tasks here in your program. Um, these are, you know, some more advanced things um, that I'm not really going to dive into here. We have diagnostics. Um, Brick is alive. That's good. That's great. <laughs> um, this, is this the firmware version or hardware version? I'm not really sure. Um, there's our battery level right around 8 volts, so I guess these batteries are getting a little bit low, um, what port we're on. Uh, the power down is how long, even if a program is running or not running, it doesn't matter, the RCX will turn on off after 15 minutes. Uh, this is an option you could change in the official LEGO software, 
Um, I believe if you set it to zero, I believe that disables it. Um, if you're on the official LEGO software, you'd set it to infinity. Um, you've got the infrared shorter long, which I believe this is only applicable to the USB tower uh, because the nine volt, you know, the, the serial tower has a, a hardware switch on the front to change that. Um, and you, you can set your display here, which is basically pressing the view button on, on there. Um, if you want to look at your output or inputs, uh, you can set the display there. Watching the brick. Um, this is one I'm not terribly familiar with on how it works, <laughs> but if you need some advanced options, um, this is something you can use. So yeah, it does have, um, timers that are built into the microprocessor. Um, so yeah, the, I don't really have much to say about this, but maybe you will find this useful <laughs> if you know a little bit more than I do. Another tool we have is the Brick Piano. This is just kind of a fun one to play with. And I believe you can record and play back. Um, and maybe it'll, I guess down here you can choose a language. So I'm guessing you can have it transposed into a program. Um, but you can kind of play it out here. A little bit of a delay at first. Um, I'll be careful what I play here to not get a copyright strike. <laughs> Like, happy birthday is, like, famously copyright protected. <sighs> what a world. Um, we got the brick joystick. Um, this isn't one I've messed with a whole lot. Um, left motor, right motor. So you can, yeah, you can set up your motors here, whether what port it's on and whether or not it's reversed. Um, and then I guess you can kind of drive around with it. I'm not sure how the delay on this would be. Um, but it's there if you want to use it. Um, there's a couple of others. I don't, I'm not sure what configurable watch is. Uh, set values. This must be something with variables. Um, you can send messages. So you can send uh, specific messages to your brick. And then we've also got the Lego remote. So you may be familiar with the official remote control that Lego released. Uh, I have a few. And I've also done a, kind of a... a overview of the remote and some features you may not know about. Um, so I'll link that video in the description. So up top here you can send message one, two, or three, just very simple. Um, you can control motors directly or you can start your and stop programs here. And you can also make it make a little noise there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn off my RCX, set it to the side. And this is the one of the builds from the robotics discovery set. And I'm going to use a remote to send message three. Okay, so no, all right, now I've got it set up. Um, <laughs> so now I will send message three using the remote on screen. And that will do the, the bug dance. <laughs> So that's just, um, so that's an option if you don't have the official remote and you just want to play around with it, you can use this piece of software. Some of these others I'm not really familiar with, configurable watch, uh, set values, um, memory map, all this stuff. Um, I may have used the MIDI conversion um, when I did the Mega Man 2 song on three RCXs <laughs> years ago. It may have been a different program because I, 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 I don't think it was NQC. I think it actually used a different language. Um, and we can also, again, we can download firmware, um, close communication, and turn it off, all those kind of things. So all of these can be very useful even if you don't use NQC to actually program in a text-based language. All right, so we're going to shift gears and show you some of the tools that can be used with the NXT. And um, I have a USB connection to it. This is one of the few ones I have with a working screen. I had four working screens, now I'm down to three out of the dozens of NXT units I have. 
Um, and most of them I got because they weren't, the screen didn't work, but I knew I could use this program. Uh, one of my most successful videos, which is only because it's been up for five years or four years, however long, is um, the NXT screen. So first uh, I need to close communication with the, with the RCX and then find brick. And I'm gonna select USB and select NXT. And now that opens up a few more of these uh, options here. So we've got NXT screen again. Um, and to set this up, you have to set it to um, I've got the ref refresh rate on the highest value and then click polling and it will uh, come alive here. And then you can, it's probably pretty loud. Uh, you can click through just like you're holding the brick in your hand. So that's extremely, extremely useful. Um, when I use four NXTs for my monorail layout, I was able to control them all from one place. Um, and so you can do the Bluetooth connections, all of that um, from a computer and not have to walk because the, the NXTs were a little bit spread out throughout the layout. This is the most important piece to me. This is amazing. And this is also available as a standalone executable, um, which I'll also link in the description. And there's some others here, NXT. I'm not even sure exactly how these would be used. Oh, wow. So you can actually, um, yeah, these are all the programs that are stored on the NXT. So you can use a, this as a, a file explorer and copy files back and forth. I didn't even know about this. <laughs> so th this is very powerful stuff, very useful. And again, we have the uh, brick piano. Oh, those are kind of short. So that's kind of fun to play with. <laughs> And it looks like my neighbors fired up the lawnmower, which signifies the end of the video. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to give a brief overview because I, I love software like this. This is so amazing. And as far as I know, I don't think they really made any money for making this. This is just Lego fans coming together and and making something for themselves and sharing it. I mean, that's that's how Apple got started. You know, Steve Wozniak wanted his own computer decided to build one and then decided to, to share the information with others. I mean, I believe in the beginning, he just handed out schematics to it. He was, it was, he was just proud of the, the project that he had done. So that ends the video. It's just an unscripted kind of look at this software because it's something I use in almost every project I do. It's just so useful. And I'm so thankful that software like this exists. Um, and again, you can use this with the Spybotics. You can use it with the Cybermaster. Um, you know, for the Spybotics, I never, I don't know of any other ways that you can just program them. Um, I believe they're, they're very simple. They don't have much memory, but it's still just a really cool option to have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Maybe learned something new. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and remember to play well. <laughs>